Pickup trucks have become something of a dying breed in the UK. Over the past couple of years, we've seen more than half of models pulled from sale, including the Fiat Fullback, the Mercedes X-Class, Mitsubishi L200, Nissan Navara, and even the Volkswagen Amarok. But while most of those pickups are gone for good, the Amarok is back. In this review, I'm gonna be telling you the 10 most important things you need to know about the car. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel and you switch on notifications. And remember, for a great deal on your next new car, just head over to whatcar.com or Google What Car Deals. Now, if you're wondering why I'm dressed for summer in December, it's because we're actually testing the new Amarok out in South Africa. And that's not because I fancy a bit of winter sun, although it is very nice. It's actually because this car is built out here, but not at a Volkswagen factory. Nope, the new Amarok is actually built at Ford's Silverton factory in Pretoria. And that's because it shares an awful lot with the new Ford Ranger. But there are some differences, including to the suspension tuning, the interior and the exterior as well. In fact, the only visual bits that are carried over are the roof, the door mirror casings and the door handles as well. The new Amarok is 5.3 meters long, so about 10 centimeters longer than the first generation car. And the wheelbase, that's the distance between the front and the rear wheels, that's grown by around 17 centimeters. This is actually one of the biggest pickups you can buy in the UK, although not quite as long as the Ssangyong Musso Rhino. And while in some other markets, you'll be able to get a shorter two-door single cab version, in the UK, it's just this double cab. Quite important in a pickup this bit, the cargo bed can take a Euro pallet sideways and a maximum payload of up to 1.19 tonnes. That's 40 kilos more than the old Amarok. These tracks here have movable mounts and each one of those can take 250 kilos and you can actually secure up to 400 kilos using these lashing eyes here. The height of the load bay is 526 millimetres. You can get a roll cover, either electric or manual, whichever you prefer. And you can also get a hard top for the Amarok as well. That basically turns it into a van or an SUV, whichever way you want to think about it. And on the roof, you can put up to 350 kilos as long as this car's parked up. But when it's driving, that number is reduced to 85 kilos. There are three Ford sourced engines available in the UK. The entry level two litre diesel has 168 brake horsepower and gets a six speed manual gearbox. But if you upgrade to the 202 brake horsepower two litre diesel, then you can have a 10 speed automatic. This range topping three litre V6, that has 237 bhp and it gets the 10 speed automatic box as standard. Whichever engine you choose, it drinks from a huge 80 litre fuel tank, but the AdBlue tank is actually bigger than it was on the old Amarok. It now holds up to 9.3 litres from 6.3 litres. There are loads of options to make the Amarok more useful or just more lifestyle. You can add the hard top that we talked about earlier, and there's also various different styling bars for the back here, a bicycle holder, and even a tent for the roof. There are five different trim levels in the UK. The cheapest is just called the Amarok, and then there's Lifestyle Pan America and this range topping Aventura. Exact prices haven't been confirmed, but we did a bit of digging for you, and it looks like the entry level car will start at about £30,000, excluding VAT, rising to about 45 k for this range-topping car with the 3.0-litre V6 diesel engine. And you can expect first deliveries in Q2 2023. Now, I haven't driven or even sat in the new Ford Ranger, but I do know some of the fundamentals are shared with that car. So they include the seat mounting points, the position at which the steering wheel sprouts out of the dashboard, and the location of some of the controls as well, including the one down here for the four wheel drive system and the parking brake as well. The structure and the basic hardware for the infotainment system is also carried over. That means you get this portrait oriented screen. It measures 10.1 inches on the cheaper versions and 12 inches as you see here, if you go for style trim or above. And it's pretty good actually. It responds nice and quickly to presses. It's nice and bright. And also you get some big icons that are quite easy to hit when you're driving along. The only annoying thing is that to adjust the interior temperature, you need to press the corners of the screen down here and then move your fingers across this slider or repeatedly tap away at these plus and minus signs. On the Ford Ranger, you get physical controls for doing that. So it's a shame VW has gone down the touch sensitive route. We would always prefer physical controls for adjusting the interior temperature. But on the plus side, the driving position is very good. There's lots of adjustment. The seats are supportive as well. And although there are lots of hard plastics in here, this is a commercial vehicle after all, 
There was also some nice touches as well. So you got some nice soft leather on the steering wheel and a leather type material on top of the dashboard here and on top of the doors, at least on this range topping Aventura model. And that helps it feel a little bit more upmarket. The extra length, particularly in the wheelbase, has improved legroom in the back. It wasn't bad in the old Amarok, but it's even better here. I'm just over six foot. The seat in front is set up for my driving position and look, plenty of space for my knees and plenty of headroom as well. This is quite a wide car, so you shouldn't have too much of a problem fitting three people across the back here. Although there is a bit of a transmission tunnel here, so the middle passenger will have to straddle that. But overall, pretty good. And because of these nice tall side windows here, you get a good view out. Now the Amarok is a pickup, so the ride is a bit lumpy compared with most SUVs. The rear axle never quite settles down and you can always feel the car shimmying around, even on roads that, like this, look quite smooth. But if you compare it to other pickup trucks, and I'm particularly talking about the Toyota Hilux and the Ssangyong Musso, which is a fairer comparison really, then the Amarok is actually quite comfortable. And it's definitely one of the better handling pickup trucks as well. The steering is now electric. It used to be hydraulic in the old Amarok. And that's not only better for fuel efficiency, but it also means that the steering can be tuned with some of the safety systems like lane keeping assistance and the self parking system as well. But importantly, it also is fairly accurate and it gives you a reasonable sense of connection with the front wheels. I mean, this isn't a sporty car to drive at all. And if you're a bit over enthusiastic through tight corners, then it can start to run out of grip and you can feel the inside rear wheel hopping a bit in the way that it wouldn't in most modern SUVs. But other than the new Ford Ranger, which as I said earlier, I haven't driven yet, this is definitely one of the best driving pickups you can buy. We also tried the Amarok off-road. The course wasn't particularly challenging, but the new model should be better on rough and muddy terrain than its predecessor. That's because it has short overhangs for better approach and departure angles, a selection of drive modes for different terrain, including mud and ruts and sand, as well as a maximum wading depth that's gone up by 300mm to 800mm. A locking rear differential that comes as standard on the Panamericana and is optional on other trim grades also helps. This distributes power equally to both wheels on the axle, meaning the Amarok can still drive itself forward even if only one rear wheel is in contact with the ground. You can still tow a brake trailer weighing a maximum of three and a half tons, but the total maximum weight of the vehicle and the trailer you're pulling has risen from six tons to six and a half tons. That's pretty good, but again, some versions of the Sangyong Musso can do even better. Until we've tested the new Ford Ranger and exact prices have been announced for both models, we can't say much that will help you decide which one to buy. What we can say though is that the new Amarok is a fantastic pickup. It combines some impressive stats with good driving manners, a smart interior and lots of standard equipment. If you're in the market for a pickup truck, it should definitely be on your shortlist. That's about it from Cape Town, but for lots more information on the new Volkswagen Amarok, just head over to our website, whatcar.com, where you can read our detailed written review. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, we'd really appreciate it if you'd give it a like, leave us a comment below if you've got any other questions about the Amarok. And other than that, we'll see you next time.